Hello everyone and welcome back to my Sandbox EDB series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.2. In this episode we're going to send our drilling truck which I showed in a previous episode as well as a fuel lift truck that would bring fuel into lunar orbit to the moon. And so here we go with the drilling truck aboard the Kelta 4 Heavy, very very loosely based on the Delta 4 Heavy. Uh, actually not very similar at all. Uh, in this case, the boosters have different engines than the center engine, and they are the only ones lit right now, as you can see. That's because the center engine has horrible ISP on the surface and is only really efficient at a certain altitude. But in any case, we're using this rocket, even though it's not very, not totally efficient because it's not reusable, because it has the wide fairing. And here you see I've got the center engine lit now that we're at altitude and its ISP is better and the boosters will soon drop off here waiting okay there we go off they go all right so now this center engine is going to carry this all the way to the moon get into lunar orbit and then get it on descent in other words none of this rocket remains in orbit anywhere there is no space junk and that includes of course the fairing which is going to re-enter so no space junk at all uh, and uh, the boosters, of course, will end up on Kerbin surface, and the center stack will end up on the lunar surface. And so here it is, you can see the drilling truck that I showed in the previous episode and how it's mounted there. Uh, a little bit tenuous, but it worked out. We have to make sure that the solar panels are facing the sun because we're not using the fuel cell at this point. It does have a fuel cell, but that's really only for when the drilling equipment is on and it's converting to liquid fuel and oxidizer. Okay, so uh, we got into orbit, we plotted for the moon there, uh, fairly fairly decent approach there, and no problems. Plenty of Delta V in this stage, it's actually meant for a much heavier vehicle. It's really only the size of the payload that necessitated using this particular rocket. I did consider using a reusable launcher for this but this seemed like less hassle. If, with a reusable launcher we would have to have a separate stage for lunar transit rather than having this stage uh, take care of all of it. Okay so here we go the, the transfer to the moon is getting complete here. We'll get it to a decent lunar periapsis and after that we're going to have to use the little satellite we have around the moon to tell us where we should land this. Again, key thing when transferring to the moon is making sure that the solar panels are facing the sun. So here I drop out a time warp and I do a little a barbecue spit rotation in order to get the solar panels facing the right way. They're on top of the crew cab on the truck, by the way. If uh, you didn't catch the episode where I introduced this, you can see them there. And again, it does have a fuel cell. It could just convert its abundant supply of liquid fuel and oxidizer into electric charge. But we're just not doing that for efficiency's sake. It is carrying a full tank of LFO, but uh, that is to help it land as well. So we don't want to be running out of that. Okay, so here we are at the moon, and we're already at a pretty good inclination. So just wanted to get into orbit quickly, and this is what we're doing here. Apologies that the engine sound seems to be very low here. I've pumped up the volume a bit, but uh, I, I'm not entirely clear why we ended up with very soft engine sounds on this recording. Okay, that's just about to burn complete, and of course we don't really need to get into a very particular orbit in this case. Here is our little scanning satellite, our survey scanner, and I take a little bit of time trying to figure out the color scheme I want. Uh, I like the heat map sort of thing, but uh, trying to get the cutoff right. I'm hoping I'm doing this right. I assume that if we increase the cutoff, that's going to show us higher and higher concentration ones calibrating to a very high level. And here we see, well, there's a very obvious large green patch. There are some very scattered red patches, but for my first foray into this, I don't want to try and aim at too particular a target. Could do. I mean, I have plenty of experience landing stuff on the moon. But uh, broad target means we can have a very large base, and that's what I'm hoping for. I don't want too many steep slopes nearby. So I'm going to aim for that crater, the big one right in the middle there. And so we need to change inclination a bit. And so after seeing which way around we're going, I make sure of that. And then I make the adjustment here, a very costly uh, adjustment here. 
because of course uh, it would have been easier to make it from further out if I had known where my target would be. But anyway, uh, we're aiming for that uh, very obvious crater just to make things easier for ourselves. And uh, here we go with the inclination burn. Again, very substantial, but we do have the fuel for it. There is no problem in terms of our delta V. And there it is complete, all nice and lined up. A little bit of leeway so that we can kill horizontal velocity first. We'll be aiming for a high pass so that we can get rid of the stage and get the drilling truck upright and allow it to descend properly. So here we go with the with the main descent burn. You can see sort of see the crater there. It's uh, just a darker patch. Doesn't seem to be too too different in altitude from the surrounding terrain. It's much more obvious on the map, of course. I try for a spot that isn't a sub crater. I didn't want to land in a crater within the crater. Again, because of the steep slopes and the desire to make sure I can land things nearby properly and perhaps drive them to this location, which is a major thing. Uh, driving being very important. And these are very heavy vehicles. I didn't want to uh, encumber them with having to go up and down slopes. So I identify a nice flat patch and aim for that. Now here's the question. What altitude should I dump the stage? Uh, that's very hard to determine. I don't know the exact altitude of the terrain. Um, I don't know how well the truck will handle. I did not test the truck in uh, in hack gravity, so I have to just guess that I've got this all lined up right in terms of lining up the center of thrust with the center of mass. And of course the center of mass will change as it starts using fuel. So that's another problem because there's just one big tank for it and that's relatively f far forward from its center of mass. I ultimately decide that the best release point would be about 3,000 meters, but that's that's not meters above ground, right? Uh, we don't know what the exact altitude of the ground is. And so that's a bit of a conundrum. Here I'm uh, still pondering exactly where to end up with. We, we clearly have plenty of fuel left in the stage, but we're going to have to dump it at some point. As it turns out, I actually did it way too late. And uh, we'll see that here in a second. This is the final burn. I, I resolved to dump the stage after this burn, but this is actually too low. So there it goes, and separation. And so those engines, on they're just the Rockamax 2477s, the little orange radial ones that are on the truck. And now the truck will orient itself properly and dispense with the adapter that was used to attach it to the launch vehicle. And so there's the adapter going, which also had the controller for the launch vehicle. Okay, but I am descending quickly and I noticed that, so I go to full thrust, and it looks like we are not quite lined up with the center of mass and center of thrust. And so it starts pitching back. Clearly we should have moved the thrusters a little bit further back, and ouch, ouch. Okay, a hop and uh, some punctured tires, but it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Uh, and now I just have to use less thrust. If I could have uh, descended with, as explosions are occurring all over the place, if I could have uh, descended with half thrust or less, I think I could have kept it level. And you can see that here. It was the fact that I had to go to full thrust in desperation because we were too close to the ground. I thought that the ground would be closer to zero meters, not two kilometers. I wasn't expecting two kilometers. So yeah, a bit of a mishap in landing there, but uh, it's all right. Uh, we are down. This will probably be able to move uh, without those tires. Uh, we'll send a Kerbal over in order to in reinflate them. It'll be fine, but let's check out how the drilling situation is. Now we don't have an engineer. Of course, the drilling will be much more efficient with an engineer aboard. But we wanted to see if this all worked out before we send Kerbals over here. And in fact, it looks like it's uh, working out smoothly. We start the fuel cell now that uh, drilling operations have commenced. And of course, we have to start conversion to liquid fuel and oxidizer. And so that all works out. It looks like the battery power is holding steady, just barely. Uh, which means in the dark it might deplete, but uh, I decide to try it out overnight. 
And it seemed like the electric charge held up just fine. Uh, no problems with the electric charge. It filled up its liquid fuel and oxidizer and it started filling up its ore tank. And so we can leave this alone for now. And now we have to launch this. This, of course, is the fuel lifter truck, which will get the fuel off of the moon. Uh, it dispenses with the converter unit, so it's it's easier to get off the lunar surface. And, of course, that will make it more efficient in delivering the fuel to space. It's not as efficient as it could be because I still have the crew cab in front, which is technically unnecessary. I also probably have more wheels than I really, really need, and so that adds mass as well. So, so does the structure of it, the I-beams, which are very heavy. So, could a more simpler system have been more efficient? Yes, obviously. But I think this qualifies as an elegant solution to the problem. And as we'll see, it's not too bad about lifting the fuel up. It lifts up more than it actually uses to get into orbit. Anyway, here we go with the launch. Again, Kelta 4 Heavy. And uh, same sort of launch profile as before. So, let's get to work here. Obviously, one of the benefits of this particular launch system is I feel it's completely reliable for this uh, sort of thing. And it's especially important that it can handle the fact that the payload is asymmetric. And of course, you can see there's very minimal uh, issues with that as it goes up. It doesn't seem to have any problem dealing with the fact that the payload is very oddly shaped. And in fact, uh, this fuel truck is even more oddly shaped than the drilling truck because it's got a huge fuel tank uh, and it's actually on one s uh, more on one side than the other so yeah it's it's actually carrying the full load of fuel because it's going to be doing more to land on the surface we're not going to be using the the main stage for as long as we did with the drilling truck and you'll see that in a sec so boosters off fairing off and you can see why I say that the fuel tank is uh, more off center uh, if you take a look there, yeah, you can see it's very definitely uh, to the upper side in this view. Now I noticed here that I've got some stray struts hanging off, and I was very worried that those would be uh, continuing to exist for an indefinite period of time. It turns out those will go away eventually, um, but yeah. So I didn't say it before, but we do have to dock this fuel truck with the drilling truck, and it's got the small dock on its tail. And so we have to back up into the drilling truck in order to transfer the fuel. And so we'll have to test whether that actually works out. That's always a little bit tricky because it might not be level ground. And not, they probably won't be quite lined up. They both got thrusters. So perhaps they can lift the, uh, one or the other can lift itself up in order to line things up. But it's still going to be a little bit tricky. Anyway, here we go for lunar transfer. And that is the resulting orbit from the transfer. Uh, again, no big deal. It's actually a little bit off on timing, uh, a little bit later than it should have been. But uh, well, here's a good view of uh, the asymmetric nature of the payload. And here we go, entering Mooner SOI. Now, since we already know the landing location where our intended drilling operations are going to be happening, uh, we don't have to wait until we get into orbit to correct our inclination. We can do that immediately, and indeed we have to because our inclination was way off. But uh, here I go lining it up, and it costs a lot less than it did for the drilling truck. Now one of the reasons I had the fuel truck full of fuel instead of just empty uh, or partially full was because we do want to get very close to our drilling truck and see how close we can get. But also we want to test out the ability to get back into orbit and we don't want to wait until we have to refill the whole thing before testing that. Okay, so we're going to have a full load. Uh, we'll fill her up at the drilling truck or whatever we used to actually do the landing. But then we're going to have a full load and try to get back into orbit to see how much that costs. Okay, so we've got our descent path and uh, we still have the struts hanging off the tail unfortunately. But here we're lining up with retrograde and uh, everything looks good for our approach. This time we do know what the altitude of the surface is, so no problems there. Uh, it's a pretty relaxed sort of approach this time, actually. And so I just uh, take it easy, make sure that I'm uh, aimed at our target. 
And really, I could release the main stage here anytime I want. The key is not to have it land on the drilling truck. Uh, so we do want to have it shoot past, and we'll do the rest of the retro burn and kill horizontal velocity with the fuel, fuel lifter itself. Uh, so uh, here we go, we should be releasing the stage now. We switch control to the, the rover controller, the rove mate. And there goes the main stage. Okay, we ignite the three engines on this. I failed to mention it, but it does have an LV-909 on its bottom. Uh, so it's got uh, two Rockmax uh, 2477s and then one LV-909. And that's for efficiency as well as the needed thrust. It was better than using more Rockmax 2477s because of the ISP. So here it goes, uh, killing remaining horizontal velocity. And lining itself up with the drilling truck. Now this is more poised than the drilling truck was. Uh, first of all, it's got the LV-909, which has better control. And I think the two Rockmax 2477s also help a lot, but I think it was just better lined up with the center of mass. Now, of course, that will change if the fuel gets shifted too much. But so far, the fuel is in a very definite position, uh, this, and there's a lot of it. Here we go. We seem to have come very close to the drilling truck. In fact, we'll land within 150 meters of it. I've got downward facing lights on this as well as upward facing lights in order to help with docking. Of course it's got its main docking port on the top and that'll allow it to hook up with any station it transfers fuel to as well as any other vehicle it might want to transfer fuel to. So we've got a lot of lights on this thing. The one thing it doesn't have lights for is to light itself up which is a little bit of a flaw. Okay, here we go very carefully bringing it down to avoid any possible wheel punctures. Don't want to have a repeat of the drilling truck mishap. And in this case we'd have no excuse for it if we did. Again, we do know the altitude of the terrain. And so it's still a little bit hard to maintain stability here because it is unwieldy. It's very heavy. And there we go. Alright, so still still mostly full it's used a healthy amount of its fuel though that's a little bit worrying but uh, it made its way over to the drilling truck and then it would have to back up into the drilling trucks docking port one of the drilling trucks docking ports as you see there and so this is how the system works this is our little system for now are uh, there more efficient systems of course but this is just what i came up with and this is EDB approved, a very elegant design indeed. But will it line up properly? Drilling truck is still drilling away. Okay, a little bit of bump. It's a little bit of skew. Doesn't seem to be getting much magnetism there. And if we look at the target there, uh, we've already selected the target and controlled from the docking port, and we are definitely higher higher than it so that's a bit of a problem trying to use RCS to fix it does not work so what I do is I switch to a drilling truck and have it try and lift itself up and to do that it uses its Rockamax 2477s initial attempts don't seem to work out but I haven't uh, selected the uh, the target docking port or decided to control from docking port so in a sec I decided to do that okay there we go and now let's try it perhaps uh, once more with feeling okay more thrust and there we go there we go we're all hooked up now and uh, all one big happy vehicle Okay, so the, the drilling unit was completely nonplussed. It was uh, just drilling away, no problems. But now I get to transfer liquid fuel and oxidizer to fill up the fuel lifter. And after that, separate the lifter off. I decided to turn off uh, the conversion on the drilling truck because it seemed to be dropping an electric charge. 
and so I wanted it to replenish for now. Anyway, here we go. Let's get this back into orbit and see how much that costs. Engage. Okay, there we go. Alright, up goes the fuel truck. Making sure it can maintain balance. Now, it's a tricky thing because we're going to have to figure out exactly how to keep it balanced when it's low on fuel, right? Because that's the other situation. I haven't tested it out yet. We'll see after it delivers fuel and only has the fuel to land how that balance is supposed to work out. And of course, it's going to be very different from this situation. Uh, the likely thing is that all of the landing fuel will probably have to be in the rear tank. But I'm not 100% sure of that. Uh, we'll have to check in the space plane hangar, probably. Okay, here we go, the final orbital burn. You can see the placement of the LV-909 pretty clearly now. And you can also see that the struts that were hanging on the tail have gone. So we're all clear of that. And it's getting to orbit just fine. It used more fuel than I would have liked. I would have liked it to use uh, the, an amount such that we still had 720 liquid fuel and commensurate oxidizer left. I was hoping that the full rear tank would have been left. But anyway, uh, it's a successful system and so we proceed with our plans in the Elegant Design Bureau. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.